hey, Faith Christian Fellowship of Tucson, FCF Tucson, and all of you that are watching, we just want to welcome you here. This is Julio Chavez. Hi. Hi, family. I miss hanging out with you guys, uh, but we're here. Thank you so much for hanging out uh, with uh, myself and Pastor John. Uh, we miss hanging out as a family, right, yeah. Pastor John? Absolutely. Thank you for coming and, and being uh, with me today. Sure, Here's no what problem. We Thank do you. Tonight, look, we normally would have received the Lord's table in our last Sunday service, but given the the the, the challenges that we you know and and changing things up with uh, conducting the service itself, we just thought it would be one additional challenge um, for that particular service, and, and instead, we thought we would have a special time that we could come together talk a little bit about the Lord's table, and receive communion together. First off, I want to just remind you of this. You know, the Bible doesn't say there is a set time or a set place to receive the Lord's table. You don't need a pastor. You don't need a priest. You don't need, you know, someone specific to officiate. But in your home right now, or uh, um, whether you're by yourself, with your family, or even on a break at work, you can receive the Lord's table. In Luke chapter 22, verse 19, Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. So all believers can join in. All believers can take a holy time to remember the Lord Jesus and what he's done for us. Here's what I want you to know right now. First of all, it's not about the elements. No, definitely not. Uh, you're, you hit it right on the, right on the, on the head, Pastor John. Yeah. Uh, it's not about the elements. It's about that relationship with the Lord. Um, to know that the same God made salvation free and accessible to everybody. Uh, you don't have to have all the money in the world. You don't have to do anything but believe. Yeah, Romans chapter 10. Exactly, you know, where it says yes. That yes. place of, hey, here's what we need. We're going to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, that God raised him from the dead. And, that, and, and confess that he's our Lord. So there was nothing that we had to have. Nope. No, we didn't have to have anything. So then why would a God w then say, hey, in order to receive my salvation, you, there's nothing that you, can, that you need to have or can do or can earn in any way, but if you're going to remember me and you're going to remember me properly, right. then you have to use the special kind of bread and you have to use this special kind of drink. No, that's, just, that, that's, that, that's not his heart. No, that's not his heart, and that's, that's just tradition. Um, God isn't creating any type of restrictions for us to remember the sacrifice he did for us. Yeah, he's more concerned about what's in your heart than what's in your pantry. So if you've just got, you know, we use in our services a lot these little cups, these little fancy right, cups. Yeah. But you don't need a little fancy cup. I mean, you've got a little mason jar. This one's actually got chai latte in it. Oh, There's nice. grape juice, and, and I've got another cup here. You, know, you can use coffee, water. It doesn't matter. If you've got you know, bread, great. If you've got a matzah cracker, man, that's, that's amazing and wonderful. Cookies, uh, um, pretzel. I mean, you could even do it with a piece of meat because it's not about the element, but it's about in that moment what you're going to allow that element to represent as you remember the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, when this took place, Julio, right. um, this first time with Jesus um, ministering, you know, uh, what we call the Lord's table or communion. Um, it was at the Passover meal. And that yeah. Passover meal is that place of, of uh, the first Passover happened in Exodus chapter 12. And you remember what was going on in Exodus? Yeah, yeah, in Exodus chapter 12, uh, God chose Moses to go talk to the Pharaoh. Yeah. Uh, and subsequently, 10 uh, plagues were sent out. Um, you know, there was hail coming down. Locusts were coming around, but frogs and frogs. boils and all I, kinds of stuff. The, the, the craziest one, and I remember as a kid, the one that freaked me out the most was the frogs. <laughs> Don't know why, but through all this chaos. There's a bunch of ladies watching right now going, yeah, I don't want no frogs up <laughs> right? in my house. <laughs> yeah, and through all this chaos, though, one place remained untouched. Yeah. And that was the land of Goshen. Come on, that's exactly right. You know, and even when it came to that, that place of the 10th plague where... The, right. The yeah, angel yeah, yeah. of death was going to move through the lamb, that there was protection. And for that one, it was the blood of the lamb. Amen. The blood of the lamb yes. being put over the doorposts. But with the other right. plagues, with the, the swarms of locusts and the flies and, and the frogs and all those things, it said that none of those 
came in to the, to the land of Goshen, to the place right. where God's covenant people were living and were dwelling. There's protection from plagues. There's protection Amen. from Definitely. these things. And it, and it comes through a place of, for us, this relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, where instead of the blood being applied on the doorpost of our homes, it's applied to our hearts. Yes, yes, definitely. It's applied to our hearts, and that's a marker of, of now saying, hey, we belong to Christ. Yeah. We belong to God. Um, and now we see that in the, in the New Testament with, with Jesus yeah, and his disciples. To, yeah, to this last communion. Right. Yeah, so in, in the new in the, in this last communion, you know, Jesus, I guess first communion. I guess first Sorry. communion. <laughs> uh, in Matthew twenty six, verse twenty seven and twenty eight, um, Jesus took the cup, yeah, and he said that this was the blood that was going to ratify this new covenant uh, that was going to be poured out for all forgiveness of sins, yeah. and that means all, all means all, absolutely. So. Um, but what what else what else do we see with 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 this Pastor John? Well, you know, I mean, when he thinks about ratified it's in this new covenant, all the blessings and all the promises of God, the Lord Jesus Christ through His shed blood at Calvary has made those um, available for you and me. You know, the Bible actually talks about in Isaiah fifty three that in His body, you know, as He uh, um, He bore. Um, sickness, sin, pain, you know, all those, those, yeah. those, those things in his body. In Isaiah 53, verse 4 and 5, it says, through the his breaking of his body, the stripes that he bore on his back, that you, we can actually receive our healing. In 1 Peter 2, 24, it says, by his stripes you were healed. So we can Amen. receive healing, Definitely. we can receive restoration of relationship, yes. Yes. and we can absolutely have a surety for all the blessings and all the promises of God because of his broken body and his shed blood at Calvary. You know, let's just take a minute uh, um, and let's look back at 1 Corinthians 11. Right. Because in 1 yeah, Corinthians yeah. 11, the Apostle Paul shares with us as believers some instructions that he received from the Lord. Yeah, so in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 11, verse 23 through 26, uh, it's, it says that, For I pass on to you what I received from the Lord himself. On the night when he was betrayed, the Lord took some bread and gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it into pieces and said, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this to remember me. In the same way, he took the cup of wine after supper, saying, This is the cup, uh, the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood. Do this to remember me as often as you drink it. For every time you eat and drink uh, from this cup, you are announcing the Lord's death until he returns. Yeah, I love the place where it says, as often. As often, as you yes. Want. You know, and so I want to just invite you right now that if you haven't already prepared um, some, some elements for yourself, go, go raid your pantry, open your fridge, you know, pull out something. Again, we pretzel, yeah. a cookie, uh, a matzo cracker, you know, a, a hamburger bun, doesn't matter. Water, uh, seven up, uh, grape juice. Uh, it's about what it represents. God's not concerned about the element itself but no. more about your heart and once you get those things you know uh, um, and have a seat with us we're just going to take a moment and we're going to pray you know father i just pray and as people are grabbing their elements Amen. and putting those things together i just thank you that in the name of jesus we recognize that jesus's body was broken for us oh yeah that his oh, yeah. blood was shed on our behalf we acknowledge that he carried sin, sickness, disease, sorrow, grief, fear, torment, unforgiveness, strife, lack, and everything else oh, yeah. in his body. That through his sacrifice for us, we have complete forgiveness and cleansing before you. And we've been delivered from all the works of the enemy. And we thank you, Father, for all of those things in Jesus' name. You know, I'm so grateful for all the things that Jesus provided for me and so amen me too every time that you want to be express your gratitude and remember him this is exactly what you can do so it said that on that day he took a, of of the bread and he passed the bread and he took it and he broke it yes and he said this is my body given for you do this in remembrance of me 
Do this in remembrance of everything that he carried that we were not capable of carrying. Father, I thank you. Jesus, I thank you for carrying sickness, sin, disease, worry, fear. You carried all those things in your body so that we could be free. And we just bless you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Take and eat. And then it says they took the cup and the, I'm going to go ahead and use this chai latte because he took the cup and he said, he gave thanks to it and then he passed it around. He gave it to each one of them and he said, each of you drink from this for this is my blood. Now this doesn't even look like blood, (laughs) but you know what? In faith, it can represent blood. Amen. Because as I drink, I'm being, I'm thanking God for the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ that was poured out Amen. Yes. for you and me. And so as we drink of the blood, we just thank you, Father, for this sacrifice that you gave in the forgiveness of sins which we received. We thank you for your blood that's been applied to our hearts, that's been applied to our homes, and it's been applied to our lives. Help Amen. us to see others through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And through that place of grace, we thank you for it. Go ahead and take and drink. And I thank you for joining us. Thank you so much, yes. This evening and taking time to do something a little different. And I know that we're in totally different settings and we're in all these different places and and things going on in our homes. But you can remind...